Well, hello there, fellow Suzuki compatriots. Mm. Eating a little lunch. Uh, what is this? Got a little uh, turkey bacon wrap here. Can't forget about the old PBR. Well, it is blowing like a gale. So, thank God I'm not fishing today. Was fishing yesterday and did pretty good. But man, I'm telling you, that water was cold on the bottom or something because we could sit for an hour and hardly get a bite on a shrimp on the bottom. What I'm doing is a bit of a follow-up for fellow Suzuki owners. And I said I was going to do this. And I'm going to do it more extensively in the next probably two, three weeks here. But what I'm doing is I'm taking my Zuki 250 and I'm doing a little inspection because I have the time when it's blowing and all this. I got the time to do it. And I'm going to show you what I did. Well, what I'm doing here is here's the anodes, the in in internal anodes on a Suzuki 250. Y'all uh, Yamaha people, I'm sure, have the same thing. Well, I just popped this one out. And let me give you a little background. Since I did the anodes last, I make notes. Plugs, July 2019. All the anodes, September 2019. I put that right on the back here in the cover. I also have notes up here about water pump, gear oil, oil change. But here is what it looks like after September, October, November, and December. That is a, probably about three and a half months, not a full four months. Now, what I've been doing is there's my barrel. It's a 77 or 70 gallon Rubbermaid commercial like horse trough barrel every single day when I come home since September I have been putting it in the barrel and flushing it out with the engine running not these stupid flush ports here not this stupid thing that's what I used to do I don't do this anymore I don't do that anymore I run it in the barrel and bring it up to operating temperature so, let's pull out the super nice little Nikron. Oh, wait a minute, what am I doing here? The Nikron flashlight. And let's show you, I just pulled it out. That's three and a half months. Very, very clean inside. Can you see that? Clean inside, but look at the salt buildup right here too bright let's say a little salt build up okay but basically clean inside now if you saw the st john's river yesterday where we were anchored up in the river and bottom fishing and literally plumes plumes it looks like smoke in the water not on the water smoke in the water shit in your engine yeah okay that's a little rock and roll okay but you can see look at that right there there's a little salt buildup so what i'm trying to prove here is let me pull that out now that's right where the anode goes in that's not too much. Now let me dig down in there. Because, there you go. Little gritty, little stuff going on in there. What Suzuki recommends is every three months you pull and inspect these anodes. And here is one. There it is, folks. Three months of being in there. Three and a half months, basically. Not good, huh? Not good.
and that's there's other ones down in here well, on the other side but these are the ones just on this side on the uh, starboard side of the Suzuki 250 so there you go after three months but I got sort of a big deal coming up here and I mean this is only for folks that really kind of follow my channel is and it sounds like it's we're we're going I just did the pre-op the other day had to go to the Gainesville VA hospital did the pre-op after two years of suffering basically day in day out month to month with prostate issues and what I have is BHP or something or BPH or something benign something or other prostate what I'm doing is on January 3rd I'm going in to be roto rooted where they're literally going to go in and they're going to kind of auger out my prostate area and the reason being is because I have uh, I have had kidney infections and urinary tract infections. And if you remember, if you're one of my steady viewers, I did this test when I went to Gainesville before for this Eurodynamics test. And that was quite interesting, let me tell you. I'll put maybe a link below of doing the Eurodynamics test and just going there and talking to my dad because he had it too. He had the Eurodynamics test, but he had prostate cancer like 25 years ago. I don't have any of the big C word as of what they can tell me right now. And they'll even tell me more afterwards. So, to, point, to make it simple on this subject, on the 3rd, I'm going in for that. I get out on the 4th, and i got to stay overnight. And then when I get home, and I'll show y'all, I'm going to be wearing a bag. Yeah, and a catheter for maybe a week. But that's not going to keep me just sitting. It's going to be mighty uncomfortable because my dad told me all about it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the Ridlime flush of the engine again. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pull out. Let me get in here. Here's the VST tank, the vapor separator. And way back here, way back in here where my finger is, Behind the fuel pump, behind the VST tank, and everything is the fuel cooler. That, my friends, in the St. John's River is what got st stopped up for me after five years of just doing this on the stupid flusher thing that didn't really do nothing. It got stopped up big time. And I can put a picture in right here of drilling it out and the crap that was coming out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the flush, I believe. I'm going to take all the anodes out, all these interior anodes. I'm going to be taking them out of the engine. Okay, I'm going to put the engine in the barrel and then over here I showed this several times before. This is my pump. And I take this pump and I run it up to the flusher. Basically up into the flusher here to fill up the water jacket with Ridlime. Ridlime is a descaling agent. And you don't need much. You put a little bit of water in. You put a gallon of the Ridlime in. And you let it sit for hours just pumping through the engine and cleaning out any corrosion that is in here and at the same time I'm gonna pull this I'm gonna pull this uh, fuel cooler because I've got a brand new one let me show you what the brand new one looks like that's the original fuel cooler right there uh, and what we had to do before if didn't catch any of these videos I'll put all the links to every one of these videos in the video description because if you are an owner of the outboard you need to know stuff like this because nobody's gonna tell you 
I've learned through the school of hard knocks, and that's what this channel's all about, is trying to teach you stuff. That engine is my livelihood. It may not be your livelihood, but if it was, you'd be thinking about this too. Okay, so what it is is uh, water in here. No, fuel in here, water in here. And that water goes in and makes a complete 90 and then runs out down at the bottom. And then your fuel comes out. This is aluminum, like a CNC machined aluminum. And see that little that little yellow dot plug that was right there. I drilled those out. This one doesn't have a yellow dot, but that's a plug. I drilled that out, and you will not believe the salt and dirt and, as I said, plumes of debris in the St. John's River, a.k.a. mud and sand. That was coming out of this thing. It got clogged in here, and it was shutting me down so badly. I mean, it was a mystery that I would have never have found if it wasn't for getting some really good clues. I'm going to put... I'm going to take that one out. I'm going to put the brand new one in. This is about $90. Okay. But it's like one of your best $90 ever spent. And to get in there, it's not that bad. Once you once you get in and you pull your VST tank off, this thing, you can just get right in and, and you can change it out. It's not that bad of a deal. But at $100, $150 an hour, you're going to be paying through the nose to probably a mechanic to do it. I'm going to put this one in, I'm going to pull that one out, and I'm going to re-drill that one out if it's clogged. The easiest way to do it is just go like this. Just blow through there. My last one, you go, you, there was no, nothing was getting through it. So what this is doing is it's cooling your fuel before it's going into the VST tank and your injectors and everything. Because I was literally getting fuel vaporization, if you remember, from the other videos. Okay, so I was getting vaporized fuel. So I have a spare. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cycle them. This one's going to go in. Then in six months to a year, maybe, I'm going to pull this one out. I'm going to put the other one. Because it's no big deal to drill that out. And then just, I put a JB Weld steel stick in there. JB Weld steel stick. That's all we did. Me and my dad did this. Uh, he helped me out. We put a plug in the end like that, and it's held just fine. I mean, there's no problems with it. So uh, that is coming up here in January. This is what I'm going to be doing when I'm walking around with uh, a catheter and a bag around my leg. And the reason they're doing that is because they really want to see if you're flushing and they want to, uh, you know, the doctors want to know that you're not getting blood clots. But hopefully that'll be one of two problems that I've been suffering with for years that will be taken care of. And I'll be so happy. I'll be so happy. So um, there you go. That's an update. That's uh, three and a half months worth. And that's how bad they still look. They're doing their job. And what I'm doing is I'm just cleaning them off. I'm just cleaning it off and uh, reinserting them in there. And uh, like I said, I'll be using the rib lime. Let me show you the rib lime. There's the rib lime. All right, see, rib lime marine. It's uh, safe and everything. Specially designed for the uh, marine environment. It dissolves mussels, shells, barnacles, lime, calcium, rust, and other mineral deposits that hinder the performance of vital water systems. Biodegradable. Vital water systems. AKA vital water systems your cooling system for your outboard. So there you go. I just wanted to give you a little update. This is coming up. I know tomorrow is Christmas. Uh, it's Christmas Eve. Maybe everybody will see this video because they're sitting around the house twiddling their thumbs. But um, 
These are very important, uh, but you don't do the rid line when you have these in. You take all your anodes out because they do want to eat up the soft, the soft metals of your anode zincs here. But I'm not doing too much today. I'm going to reinsert this back in. I just wanted to take a look after three and a half months. That's what Suzuki recommends. Every three months, check these out. Check them out. Uh, it's really good to look in there. That is what I'm trying to always do. Is because the more gunk... I'm looking in there and it's not really that bad considering what the St. John's River looks like. This engine right now is going on 1,560 hours. I'd like to have 2,560 hours if I could. Why not? If you take care of it, why not? It should, but I'm not a mechanic. I just play one on TV, right? That's just a little update. And you can be able to look for that video when I'm running my pump and I'm doing that when I'm laid up for a week. And the funny thing is, is right after that week is over, they pull everything out, they check you out, and I got right back on the water. So I got to uh, get that catheter and all that crap pulled out and everything done and on a Friday, and if not before. And on Sunday, I got... Uh, husband and wife booked already so that's coming up and thanks for watching um, everybody glad to ha hope have you here and um, Merry Christmas and a happy new year because it will be for me I'm losing a ton of business already just having this week off I'm losing big time because I didn't realize how busy I was going to end up being but then I would have had to wait till February and that was too late I didn't want to get into February. So I had to do this surgery, and it's a big time surgery. You're knocked out cold, and plus you gotta stay in the hospital overnight. So that'll be on the 3rd of January, if everything's going right. I'll see you then. Thanks for stopping by to the maintenance holic. Captain Dave Sport Fishing, the maintenance holic. I don't normally fish, but when I do, I catch shitty whitey. Got one on! Got one on! Oh, geez, yeah, he wants to maybe shut. Oh, he's gonna get close to the anchor, trying to shuttle him on back this way. They always want to go for the goddamn anchor. Golly! Oh no, my God, that keep, don't let him bust the surface. Oh my God, <laughs> around the anchor line and everything. That's a nice fish. What a catch on a live pogey, folks.